Welcome to the show. I'm Doug Johnson, and this is The Business of Life. During each show, we talk with a local personality who is willing to share with our audience three of their strategies for life success. Today's guest is a good friend of mine. Her name is Cheryl Foster, and she is the president and CEO of BFG Federal Credit Union. And BFG has been a recipient of the 2022 Best of the Best Akron Award. So Cheryl, welcome to the show. Thank you, Doug. And it's a pleasure to have you on board here today. Thank you for having me. You bet. We've, we've known each other for years, and neither of, of us is that old, of course. <laughs> but you have a pretty interesting background, and we're going to talk about some of that today. Unlike many of today's generation, though, to start off, um, it's very interesting to me that today's generation changes jobs or seems to change jobs every year or, year or two. And you have been at BFG FCU for over 40 years. Yes, I have. So you started, I'm assuming, when you were about six. Uh, it was about five. About five. <laughs> okay. A long time ago. So you've been there for a long time, have done very well, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But first, can you explain to our audience, please, the difference between a bank and a credit union? Sure. Um, basically, we all offer the same services, um, but the major difference between a bank and a credit union is the board of directors. Um, a bank has a paid set of board of directors and shareholders, and a credit union has a volunteer board. So with a bank, they have to answer to the shareholders. They're you know, they need to make a profit. They need to make everyone happy. Um, we need to make a profit, but we're not paying shareholders. So because we're not doing that, we're able to um, offer lower rates on loans. And you do. And fewer fees, um, like on checking accounts or uh, loans to uh, any type of services. So that's really the main difference. Um, and I think that credit unions, you know, we try to... Um, offer that personalized service. Um, you know, try to know our members. They're not just a number. Um, well, and that's one of the things that I always have thought is that your folks are always so friendly, so down to earth, so authentic. Mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty typical of credit unions. They tend to be smaller than the national banks, obviously, right. and more of that personal feel. A BFG is localized to Summit County, right? That's right. Um, if you, we have a, a community charter, which means that if you live in Summit County, you work in Summit County, volunteer in Summit County, go to church in Summit County, that relationship has to be with Summit County, and then you're eligible to join you and your uh, family members. Okay. And one of the interesting things, I think, uh, banks typically call their customers customers, and yes. you call them members. Yes, we call them members because um, uh, you have a vote. Um, you are a member of the credit union, so you have a vote in the credit union. Um, you can come to the annual meeting um, and... Um, you know, vote you vote on your board of directors. Interesting. So, yeah. And I know BFG FCU has been in business for many, many years. Yes. And I know many of the folks on your board have been there for quite a while. So there must they must have a vested interest in the credit union and obviously um, a very big interest in serving as well. Yes, yes they do. We've um, been in business since 1935. And um, yes, the, the board of directors, some of them have been on there for quite some time. Um, and they all are members of the credit union. So they do have a vested interest in what is going on. And I, I just think that's super um, because it really does 
lend itself to local management mm -hmm. and the idea of volunteering on the board uh, if they're willing to give up their time and, and efforts that in itself makes a statement. Yes, yes so, it does. Cheryl, one of the things that I find interesting, you continue to break the glass ceiling for women. Um, when I first uh, knew about your credit union, a lady by the name of Betty Phillips was the president and CEO. Mm -hmm. And since Betty retired, um, there has been a male uh, president CEO, and now you have been president CEO for uh, a couple of years. Yes. So, how do you feel about being or breaking that glass ceiling again, or still continuing the legacy? Well, it, it definitely um, had it, its challenges, uh, especially for Betty being a female CEO. Um, and it's still, it's still not easy out there. I think the uh, banking industry is male dominated. So um, for both of us, it, it was um, a struggle at times um, to get over that barrier. But um, Betty uh, paved the way for me. Uh, she was uh, a mentor, gave me a lot of opportunities, uh, especially as a female. Um, grooming me to that special day. And it seems to me that you're doing the same. Yes, yes. Um, definitely try to give um, equal opportunity, male and female, um, to the staff to learn and uh, grow um, for the future. So do you consider yourself a role model for, for other women in the work world, not only in Credit unions. Um, I hope so. I, I hope I, I hope that I am a role model, just like the role model model that I had uh, to carry me through my career. I and, try to do the same. And what are you doing specifically to give opportunities to folks? Um, you know, we um, have education. Um, we. Um, let the team, all the team, uh, participate in the activities and um, give their thoughts and um, you know let them participate. Well, I know you were involved in a in an event here in town recently, a fundraiser for the uh, uh, Library Foundation, and. There were four of you from the credit union who were here, and everyone, yourself included, mm -hmm. obviously, gave lots of input um, and really participated. Uh, we were very pleased, and hopefully they were also. But that just reinforces what what you just said about giving them opportunities, giving them the chance for input, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So. Um, are you doing something to further the idea specifically that women are just as capable as men to try and overcome that barrier? Um, I wouldn't say anything specific. Um, uh, it, you know, it, it is getting better. Um, women are getting treated um, a little more fairly. Um, in the workplace. Uh, it's not quite like it used to be 20, 30 years ago, but um, I wouldn't say that we're doing anything specific. Um, I think it's just in the day, in and day out, work mm -hmm. and, and what we do. Okay. So we know that you are continuing to break the glass ceiling. We know that you've been there <clears throat> for a couple of years. So what is your backstory? How did you get to be president and CEO of a credit union? Well, I, I like to uh, quote Zig Ziglar um, in that there's no elevator to success 
you have to take the stairs. And uh, I definitely took the stairs. <laughs> um, I started over 40 years ago, and I was a lone typist. So I typed loan papers. That was before computers and automation. So I... Um, manual It was or not electric? a manual. It was an electric <laughs> typewriter. And uh, moved my, my, my way up. Um, I went to... Um, from there, I was a teller. Then I was a head teller. I went to... Um, we call it EFT services, but it was um, checking account processing and direct deposit, that sort of thing. Um, I went to accounting, and um, from there I went to investments. I was the investment manager for a while, and then I was the CFO, chief financial officer, for a while, and then uh, executive vice president for about 12 years. And here I am as the president and CEO. So uh, with a lot of hard work, um, overcoming barriers, and putting in a lot of uh, hours, dedication, hard work, um, it took a while to get there. And um, I, that's why I particularly like Zig Ziglar's quote that you have to take the stairs sometimes. And the, <clears throat> excuse me, and that's exactly what, what you did. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, how did you first get the job at the credit union as a loan typist? I mean, was it out of high school or college or what, what made you go to the credit union? Well, um, I was 18 when I started, mm -hmm. and a friend of my oh, father's... I thought you were five. <laughs> Gee. No, I was 18, but uh, a friend of my father's uh, knew of a position available at the credit union, so I went down for an interview with Betty Phillips, and, um, and that's where it all started. And I think, you know, like we had said before, Betty gave me those opportunities, and, you know, whether she saw something in me or my hard work and dedication, my drive, um, that I just moved myself all the way up, so. Uh, as I recall, Betty was quite a force to be reckoned with. Yes, she was. <laughs> We'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to follow up with, oh, okay. well, do you think you are a force to be reckoned with? <laughs> um, I, ho I hope not. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope not, but a role model. A role model. Yeah. We'll leave that one yes, there. Yes, yes. So on your journey, on, on your taking the stairs to the top, what do you think have been some of the biggest pitfalls that you have managed to overcome? Oh dear. Um, wow. You know, I think um, the times that it was tough, I think it was just um, regrouping, sitting down, um, telling myself that I can do this, mm -hmm. I can overcome, um, believing in myself, uh, the people that, my co-workers, and that um, taking the team approach and that we can, we can get it done and be successful. You and I have known each other for a long time and as long as I've known you I think you've taken that approach of how valuable your team is and mm -hmm. using their capabilities for everybody's advantage and really believing not only in yourself mm -hmm. but in your employees. And one of the things that I have always said in, in my career is if you trust someone enough to hire them, trust them enough to do their job. Absolutely. And And I think that's obviously what what you have done also absolutely um, I have a great team uh, and um, I trust them they're smart they're capable and they make my job easy that's the whole name <laughs> of the game <laughs> yes. isn't it <laughs> absolutely <laughs> oh my gosh so I know that you work all kind of crazy hours 
what do you do to relax? Well, um, my relaxation is that I play the piano. Okay. So um, when I am feeling stressed, I sit down and I could be sitting for two hours and I thought I was sitting there for five minutes. Uh -huh. So that's my stress reliever, is, is playing the piano. Uh, classical, jazz, um, pop? Little bit of everything. And it's really more uh, for enjoyment. I've been playing since I was like six years old. Okay. Um, so it was a whole lot more serious when I was young. And again, it's just for relaxation um, to sit down and play. Yeah. So is there ever a chance we'll see you at a bar somewhere on a Saturday night? No. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the piano? No. No. Huh? <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> I, I think that's great. Um, do people know that you play the piano? Or do you have one in a little keyboard mm -hmm. in your office? No, no. That's an idea, though. No. Uh, not too many people know. Not too many people know. But, um, yeah, I, I play the piano. Oh, I, I have a little a baby grand piano at home and just enjoy sitting down and playing. Nice. I don't want an audience. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I suppose, really, you have an audience all day, every day, so it's nice That's just true. to be able to sit back and um, play and, and enjoy yourself, kind of lose yourself in the, exactly. in the moment. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Great. How important to you is community involvement and why? I think uh, community involvement is, um, is very important. Uh, uh, it's where we live, it's our family, it's our friends, our business associates, um, whatever, you know, we, we need to be out there in the community and know our community so that we can help them. Um, they come to us and, um, you know, we, we like to know what's going on, we want to hear their story. Um, and you, you never know what's going on in someone's life and um, it, it, it's nice to be out in the community and get to know people. And Like you said, we were just uh, at the Foundation's mini golf outing at the library, and it was so much fun, it was mm -hmm. a success. Um, we got to meet so many people. Well, and thank you for BFGFCU being the title sponsor. We certainly appreciate that. Very, very glad to do it, very glad to do it. But. Um, yeah, it's, it's real important to us to be out in the community. I think that any business, credit union, bank, or otherwise, <clears throat> needs to have that community involvement just by virtue of the fact that um, you're known in the community, you pay taxes in the community, mm -hmm. and your customer base is that community. And it's so important to engage mm -hmm. And those companies who don't do that, I think, see the, the negative effects of not participating. So um, kudos to, to the credit union for, for doing that. And um, it, it just is so very, very important. Yeah, and I wish more, more people got that, yeah. you know. Yeah. So what are your plans for the future? Uh, continue to working for a few more years. Um, when I retire, um, I, I do have two black thumbs, <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, hopefully when I retire, um, I plan to get into a little bit of gardening. Mm -hmm. um, I did take um, a couple weeks ago a class on how to trim fruit trees because I have a couple of apple trees okay. and I, have, I know nothing what to do with them. So I'm hoping to be a little more outdoorsy in the future. Okay. In retirement when that comes. Well I have to tell you we've, my wife and I have both been retired for mm, six or seven years now. It's wonderful. I recommend <laughs> it to anybody. But we're members of the credit union, so you can't retire yet. Okay, no, so. no, not yet, okay. not yet. Okay, so Cheryl, 
we have talked about strategies for success, and, and your first one is Zig Ziglar's, uh, there mm -hmm. is no elevator to success, you have to take the stairs. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add to that? No, I just think that, um, you know, it doesn't happen overnight, it takes time. Um, it takes time, it takes hard work, dedication, and I think taking the stairs, there's a whole lot more gratitude when you finally reach there and appreciation mm -hmm. for how you got there. I think gratitude these days is really becoming an important part of successful people's lives mm -hmm. that um, just giving thanks and being grateful for the good things uh, that are happening because there are so many things that aren't good. Right. If we focus on the good ones and, and we're thankful for those that we have in our lives, then we're much happier and more positive and more productive. Absolutely. So good, good point. Your, your second strategy for success is to have empathy. Yes, I think, um, you know, personally and business-wise, um, I think it's important to have empathy, whether it be family, friends, coworkers, um, your members or customers. Um, everyone has a story. Um, you know, and I try to put myself into that story Geez, if that was happening to me, how would I want to be treated? Um, you know, or, you know, if, if an employee, let's say their one of their parents just got, they got a phone call and they had to go in, you know, to the hospital and, you know, it's like, go, go. Mm -hmm. You know, don't worry about here. Um, go take care of your parents, whatever you have to do, because family, um, is very important. Family comes first. Uh, work comes last. Well, There's I, a balance. I, I think that what you just said about family first and do the right thing, um, and that shows how much that you and the credit union really care mm -hmm. about your employees and your members. Mm -hmm. And people get that caring. Right, you know right. they they appreciate it, and um, that's that's a good thing. We right. all need to be more empathetic. I think. Right, right. The third thing, and I I have to laugh when you said this to me, is surround yourself with people smarter than you are. <laughs> yes. But talk about that. Yes, uh, I have a great uh, management team. Uh, they're all smarter than I am. <laughs> Uh, so it makes my job easier, and um, it uh, th they make me a success. We're all a success. So it's very, very important to have that team built around you. And like you said, where you can trust them, and you know they're going to do a good job and do, do what's right, and think of not only themselves, but you know, the whole credit union, the whole team. Okay, so tell us a secret here, because I'm sure there are other company owners listening to this. How do you find those people who are smarter than yourselves that you want to hire as employees? It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> Sometimes it, it takes a long time to find that right person. But. So what do you look for in a person? Uh, well... Um, you know, when you hear their story, um, you can learn a lot about a person just by listening. Um, whether, you know, it's someone that you're hiring or just like our members and they come in and they want a loan and maybe their credit score isn't um, as stellar as what it, it should be. What's, you know, what's that reason? Was there some medical reasons? Um, you know, kind of find maybe some kind of financial hardship that came in. Um, there's always a story, and you can learn a lot about people just by listening. Well, and I think again, that's something that sets the credit union apart from a bank. Not all banks. I'm generalizing <laughs> here, uh, but it seems some of the regional banks have the attitude: well, if you don't fit 
this profile, then you know, don't let the door kiss you on the way out. Right. And right. Um, I again, I just think it's so very important um, the empathy mm-hmm. that you all have, and um, the fact that you do care about your members and your employees Mm -hmm. because it really shows, it really makes a difference uh, in the success of of your business. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I almost hesitate to call credit union a business, but it is. It is. And, um, you know, so it's real important um, to run it the right way and to treat people the right way. And uh, because if you don't, It'll come back to haunt you. That's right. You're out of business. You're out of business. You're out of business. So, Cheryl, any last tips, any last words of wisdom for our audience today? Um, you know, I think, like we've kind of uh, said previously here, is just to work hard, dedication, um, and you'll get where you need to be. Okay. We, um, I, I really like that, the quote from Zig Ziglar, there's no elevator to success, you have to take the stairs. Mm-hmm. I think that says so much, so simply, and it's really kind of a memorable mm-hmm. statement, and I know you- And a life statement. Just, and a life mm-hmm. statement, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think our audience should remember that. Hopefully, I'll remember it. And you already practice it, so <laughs> there you go. Cheryl, thanks so much for being here today. It certainly was a pleasure, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I did. So, thank you so much. Thank you.